Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be kind of different from anything I've done on my channel. It's going to be the long awaited studio slash filming setup tour of my studio where I film. It has been highly requested. Everything that I use is pretty affordable. I don't use anything too bougie or too extravagant. And if it is extravagant, I give you guys alternatives. By the way, I'll have all the stuff that I mentioned. Everything that you see in today's video will be linked down below in the description box. So it's super easy for you guys to, you know, navigate and stuff like that. And um, you can easily find everything. Quickly, before we get into the whole studio tour and stuff like that, I do wanna like talk about lighting and equipment and stuff like that. There is several different lighting setups that you guys can do. I will have diagrams that I've made. I'll have them on the screen, but I'll also link them in the description box for you to see. Just to give you guys like a diagram of like, or a layout, like a blueprint of how you should be setting up your equipment. I'll be doing it for people with just ring lights, with stuff boxes, everything like that. Just to help you and just to give you guys a better understanding of how you should be going about like setting up your equipment and your filming and stuff like that so also before we get into the whole tour and me talking in depth with all the equipment equipment and stuff that i have i just wanted to talk about a few things that i didn't mention in that little tour for editing i use final cut pro x it is a pretty pricey editing software if you can't afford final cut pro imovie is just as good well I wouldn't say just as good, but it is very good if you are entry level and Final Cut Pro can be very, very difficult, especially if you are kind of entry level and you don't really know how to edit and stuff like that. And if you can't afford Final Cut Pro, iMovie is pretty good if you're still like a newbie and a beginner when it comes to editing and stuff like that. iMovie is just as good and it gets the job done and it does what it needs to do for you. I haven't used iMovie in a very, very long time and I definitely prefer Final Cut Pro over iMovie. If you don't have a Mac computer and you are running on Windows, I wouldn't say use Windows Movie Maker. I know Windows Movie Maker is kind of trash in my opinion. I've worked with it and I just hate that software so much. So if you are running a Windows, I do suggest investing in um, Vegas, Sony Vegas Pro or um, Adobe Premiere, stuff like that. Um, Adobe has really good monthly subscription plans if you can't afford the software up front. Either way, when it comes to like doing this job, I would recommend a Mac computer anyways. Honestly, Mac computers are completely better than Windows computer computers in my opinion, especially when it comes to editing and doing this part of YouTube and this kind of career. I definitely prefer Mac computers over Windows. When it comes to like filming my videos, I use a my computer as a monitor. I also like that better because I can control the camera from my laptop. The software I use for that is EOS Utility 2. It is the second one. So this is EOS Utility. This is what I use to see myself. You can control the camera settings from there. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice, software i can take pictures from here it's just really nice so i really do recommend eos utility to all of you guys in case you don't are, you don't want to buy um, a monitor if you guys enjoyed this video give it a huge thumbs up if you guys want more videos like this let me know like how i edit my pictures how i edit my videos doing this stuff is really hard and a lot of youtubers a lot of people are really stingy with their tips and how they film if you guys have any questions or concerns please do not hesitate to ask in the comment section down below i will try to get back to you as quickly as possible you guys know i stock my comments all the time i have a feeling this video won't do well but i just need it on my channel so Anyways, I love you guys. I hope you enjoy and yeah, let's get on with the video. Yeah, this is the entrance to my studio. I have my studio in my den in my house technically. I did have it in a room before, but I just didn't really like it and I wanted to be in a little bit of a more open space. I know I'm gonna have to get over that when I move into an apartment with my boyfriend because I'm gonna get a two bedroom and this house is a four bedroom. So I'm obviously gonna have to downgrade or downsize. But for right now, I just wanted to enjoy the space that I had. This is just the overview of my little filming room. Super simple. But this is just the overview. I will be explaining that yellow plastic bag in the future, so don't be alarmed. I know it looks a little bit, you know, banshee, but um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so my biggest thing right now is time management and organization. That's something I've been really slacking on. So I purchased this little um, shelving unit on Amazon. This was literally $50. That's it. 
Um, by the way, everything that I talk about, literally everything that I mention and talk about in this video is going to be linked down below for you guys, so it's easy for you guys to like find it. So in the shelving unit, I just have a few of these acrylic organizers that um, Imp Impressions Vanity sent me. I decided not to put these in my makeup room because I'm very particular on what my makeup room looks like, and I'm not a huge fan of acrylic organizers because they're see-through and it just looks a little bit messy to me. There's just random makeup in here just for whatever. Um, and I've been starting to put all my favorite lipsticks in this little lipstick holder. Usually when I'm doing my makeup, it's to film or it's to do a look for Instagram. And because I have my studio lighting in here, it's usually the best quality in, in here. So most times I'm doing my makeup in here, which is kind of stupid. It's like there's no point for me to even have a makeup room. But my makeup room is honestly just my storage room. It's just full of like shelves with all my makeup in it and like a vanity and stuff like that. So, But all my favorite kind of stuff that I always constantly reach for is pretty much on this shelf and this is just all of my favorite current lipsticks. I have a lot of Morphe and e.l.f. liquid lipsticks, One Jouer. I just love Morphe liquid lipsticks a lot. Some Dose of Colors, Kat Von D up here, and some MAC liquid lipsticks. And then I have one Maybelline one that's really nice. On this area, I haven't really put anything here yet, but I have this PR package that I was just sent from Kat Von D, which is the Saints and Sinners palette, which I am going to be playing with very, very soon. This is like a thing you put like compacts in. I've been really trying to find um, acrylic, not acrylic, but organizers like this that fit compacts, and I haven't been able to find any, so if you guys can like let me know in the comment section down below, please, I would really appreciate that. So this is kind of where I just organize, organize makeup that I am gonna be using. This one is just like a box of a mess, like it's just a mess in there. It's kind of like World War Three in there. Like I said, most of my stuff is just an organized mess. I know where everything is, but it's still sloppily put together. That's kind of how I roll in this little household over here. So there's just like a bunch of random crap in here, but there is stuff that I kind of reach for, which is this. I love this palette so much from Kat Von D. It's their Shade and Light palette. I love that one so much. Just a random box of this Estee Lauder foundation that I just bought. This is kind of what this section is. It's just mostly makeup that I either constantly reach for and I need it in my close vicinity because I don't want to be going back and forth to my makeup room or it's products that I need to be featuring in videos. Usually when I have a video idea, I kind of put all the products into one bin and then that's that bin is dedicated for that video and I'll show you an example of that later. Down here is just palettes that I really, really love. Um, a lens. This is, oops, sorry, sorry sis, did not mean to do that. This is, I forgot what this is called, but basically it helps with custom white balance in your videos. Um, you just put it in the screen, in the center of the screen, take a picture and it does custom white balance. If you guys are interested in this, I will um, link it down below and I'll also link a tutorial on what this is used for and meant for down below. This bin is just palettes that I really, really love, that I constantly reach for, or I've been meaning to feature in video. So I have the Sephora Pro palette that I just bought, the Morphe 3502, which I've been meaning to use in a video, these NYX Perfect Filter palettes that I've been meaning to put in a video. I really love this Violet Voss Nicole Concilio palette. The Tarte Blush book is really nice. This BH Cosmetics, um, Spotlight Hype palette is literally everything. I featured it in a um, favorites video. It's honestly such a nice glow palette. My e.l.f. contour kit, my fave. But yeah, this is just where I put all the makeup that I've been kind of reaching for or I need to talk about in videos. It just, it's a place where I can go to to find stuff that I need to be talking about in videos and stuff that I need to be that I use a lot and such and things of that nature. So over in this area is my photography stuff and just a random backdrop that I turned into a rug. <laughs> this is what I use to take those insane photos for my Instagram with the sunlight and stuff like that. Uh, if the sun is like directly hitting you, I use this to kind of use it as like a soft box to soften the light so it's not as harsh. If you guys want a better example, my good friend Alyssa Ashley talked about this kind of stuff in her How She Takes Photos video and I'll link that down below. Um, and this can also be a reflector, I just have to get the thingy for it. This is a reflector that I use for picture taking and stuff like that. I used to do picture taking in my studio lighting, but since people started to copy how I took pictures and how I edited my pictures, I uh, since retired that theme. <laughs> no shade, just tea. These are really, really good for taking photos. Like I said, check out Alyssa's video if you want to know more because they are bomb as hell. 
So over here is just like a clothing rack and this holds all of my backdrops. Well, most of my backdrops. I don't do backdrops anymore because of, um, I just, I don't want to do backdrops anymore. I definitely will bring backdrops back into my videos, but for right now, I just, I've been loving the setup that I have now. I just like this because I know where all my backdrops are. If you guys are wondering, all of my fabric backdrops, like this, 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 you know, these sequins, all that stuff comes from the fabric store. I go to Joanne's fabric store here in the United States. I don't know if she's anywhere else, but just go to a fabric store. I get two and a half yards, and that works perfect for backdrops. If you are on a budget, literally sheets work fine. I use sheets for like a year and a half until I decided to buy fabric from the fabric store because it can get pricey. Like this um, faux fur backdrop was... I believe $50 for two and a half yards, which can get pricey, like I said. So honestly, you guys, sheets work fine. If you just iron the sheets and get the wrinkles out, it'll work perfect. Like I had a pink sheet that worked beautifully. I had a purple sheet that worked beautifully. So if you're trying to get that backdrop kind of vibe, sheets work fine. You don't need to go and buy expensive fabric or anything like that. I mean, the fabric store doesn't get that expensive, but I mean, if you are on a budget and you just can't be buying stuff like that, um, sheets work fine. I just have all of my backdrops hanging out on this little clothing rack. This clothing rack was literally $15 on Amazon. It's super cheap and it's super flimsy, but it gets the job done and it does what I need it to do. So for my camera, I use the EOS Rebel T5i, the Canon T5i. This is a really, really good camera, and I believe it's a lot cheaper now because I think they have the T6i out now, and I think they're coming out with the T7i very soon. So this is really marked down. I got it when it came out. I got it when it was like 600 bucks. Don't do that. So this camera came with an entry-level lens. It is this EFS 18-55 millimeter lens. I hate this lens so much, I never use this. This lens lens is also an entry level lens. It's not the best quality. It is a zoom lens. It's a 55-250 millimeter lens. It does have autofocus. I am getting a Sigma lens because Sigma lenses are so much better when it comes to filming and just quality. They're a lot sharper and crisper. This isn't bad either. You guys see my videos. It's not bad either, but when it comes to like just like lighting and stuff like that it's just really hard to work with this lens when it comes to a camera and video quality the lens is always important the body of the camera isn't as important as the actual lens the lens is what brings the quality so when you're really investing invest in a good lens because it will not steer you wrong sigma lenses are really good i really recommend them i'm in the process of buying a sigma lens thousand dollars that's coming out of my bank account for that lens but it's totally gonna be worth it because it's a good lens. But this lens isn't bad either. It's a very good entry level lens. It's really good for photography and it's also really good for video taking. But like I said, the quality just isn't there for me anymore. And as my channel grows, so does my equipment. So also when it comes to getting a camera, it's super important that you guys get a autofocus capable camera. A lot of beauty gurus right now use the Canon 70D Mark III or the 50D Mark III camera, which is like a $2,000 camera, which is unbelievable. That camera does not have autofocus capability and they always have to have like their boyfriends or a cameraman um, take control of the camera for them and that's just unrealistic for me. Okay, so this mic right here, I hope you can see it. The lighting's kind of wonky right now. This mic right here is a Rode mic. Again, this is a very entry level type of mic. I do not use this mic anymore. Between the months of January and May, I'm using this mic, so if you guys want to go hear the quality, check out those videos. This is $99. It's a good mic, but honestly, for $99, I definitely think you can get better. They have a next one up that's like $129 that I definitely recommend over this one. But this is a good mic if you're trying to get into it. Also, this camera has a mic built into it as well. That mic isn't that bad if you guys really can't just be buying a mic like that. Your camera mic is honestly fine, especially if your camera is going to be pretty close to you. Most of my videos up until like late last year was used with the this camera mic. A lot of people do care about audio. I'm, I'm a person that really does care about audio. And if the audio in the video isn't that good, I'm not going to finish the video. I'm just... I'm very particular about the sound and what I'm hearing, and if it's just not the best, I get irritated and I kind of click away from the video, so mics are pretty important. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is this thing. It's plugged into my camera. I do not rely on um, batteries or anything like that. I have like this thing, this faux battery that's plugged into this camera. 
that plugs into an outlet so my camera is constantly always on and always charged. Also, I have this little USB thing plugged into the camera because I plug it into my laptop right here and I use my laptop as a monitor. And I just have my laptop set on some PR boxes that I've gotten. Yeah, I know, super, super bangy, but I make do with what I have. So this plastic bag is honestly just weighing down this light right here. Um, it did come with a sandbag that would weigh this down, but I lost it when I moved. Um, so I just have this plastic bag with Fabuloso and some makeup in there weighing it down. Okay, so moving on to the part that I know everyone is here for. It is my lighting and my setup. So when I did have a backdrop, and I'll definitely link all the equipment that I had for my backdrop in the description box. Um, I had this guy right here. I had two of these. I don't know where the other one went that held up this bar right here. And I taped this spotlight. There's a pack of four. It's like a pack of four or eight spotlight lights like this that I got off of Amazon. The stuff that lights up my backdrops and lights up the, the scene behind me, the backdrop behind me, is because of these. They're really great and I'll link them down below. So for lighting, I have three soft boxes. These are the Fovitech Studio Pro soft boxes. I'll link them down below. These are the best soft boxes I have used in my entire career. Uh, they have settings. They are amazing quality. They're super bright. I don't even need a ring light in front of me anymore. I love these soft boxes so much. I really hate to say goodbye to them very soon. I'm getting um, Diva lights very soon, Kino Flow lights. So this is what they look like all lit up. Over here, I have these kind of panels. I got these at Home Depot. I got this, it's one It's one huge panel that I broke in half. I got this tip from Desi and Katie, my good friends. They helped me out with this. Basically what these act as, as reflectors, and they also act as a way to keep the light in. These are the best things I've ever included into my little setup because these just, I don't know what it is, but these just make the quality 600 times better. These are amazing and it's like five bucks for one big panel. Okay, so coming over here, I have this ring light. This is actually my very first ring light. Newer, newer. I got this on sale back in 2015 for like 70 bucks. It's probably marked up by now, but it's still a lot cheaper than the Diva ring light. I'll have that link down below as well. Honestly, you guys, if you're starting out and you can't afford all of this like crazy lighting like this, if you just can't do that right now, just get a ring light. It works fine, and I also put this on here to show you that like you can put your phone, you don't need a fancy camera, you can put your phone in between the ring light, or you can take this off. You can take that off and then just put a camera on there, a ring light, and these panels will give you so much more lighting, and it'll definitely do you justice. And this dims, so if you care about that, it's a dimmable ring light. And I just have it light up my current backdrop, my current set, if you will. So I just sit at a desk, I got this desk on Amazon, it's an Ikea desk. This is the mic I use, it is the Zoom H4n mic. And I put this little guard thing on it so it doesn't peak at all. This is a really expensive mic. This is like $200. And it's considered an external mic. So when it comes to editing, I have to like do extra. Like when I'm filming, I have to clap three times so the audio syncs up. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is honestly really extra, but the quality in my audio is so much better now. So I definitely recommend this microphone. It's really great. I have all my favorite brushes, hand sanitizer, my favorite mirror that I also travel with that lights up. And then I have a speaker for when I'm doing a look or something and or I'm doing a Snapchat tutorial. I also just have my notes in front of me. It's really important that I have notes when I'm filming and stuff like that because it just keeps me organized and it keeps me like on track with what I'm saying. Today I'm also filming a poorly reviewed makeup and I just have all of these notes and um, and then I have my products I regret buying, just notes. It was sponsored by Best Fiends. I have a few talking points, just like a synopsis on what I should say. And then for my sponsor, I just have like mandatory talking points that I should really hit when I'm filming. So it's just really keeps me organized. I got this notebook at Walgreens. You guys really asked me about that in my last video. Like I said, today I'm filming a poorly reviewed makeup, so I just have a bin of all that makeup that I've been accumulating for that video and this just helps me stay organized and I can just like have all my stuff. A lot of you have been asking me where I got this sign. I'll have a link down below. I got it on Amazon. This is a fake plant that I got on Amazon. The shelf I got on Amazon. I have these LED light strips. I don't know. You can probably see it right there. These LED light strips that I put behind this bookshelf and it comes with a remote and you can just change the uh, 
the colors, everything on this little shelf I either got from Hobby Lobby or Ross. Um, I have makeup, acetal decorations. A lot of people thought this was someone else. This is literally a picture of me. Um, Y'all tried it. <laughs> and then I have this cute little picture of my collaboration with Milk Makeup. I'm super proud of that. And then I have my little lipstick right there. It wasn't only available at BeautyCon. We tricked you guys. It went online as well. And you guys sold it out within 24 hours, which is so dope, given that this is a blue color. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just use this as decoration. It's nothing special. There's random crap up here. But yeah, you guys, that is my filming setup, how I do everything. I hope this helped you guys out a lot. Okay, you guys, that is everything. That is my studio tour. Like I said, everything that I talked about, everything that I showed in this video will be linked and listed down in the description box on where you can get everything, where you can buy everything. I'll be sure to make it super easy to navigate. And yeah, I love you guys so much, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.